everybody, welcome back to the vault. Today, um, I have a couple things I wanted to go over. The last video I did with you guys was my arcade cabinet, and I got a lot of results back from that. A lot of you guys uh, had questions about it, so I'm going to do another video in the future about that and go in depth of what I did to make the coin slots work and everything else, and make my custom controllers. And I got some hate mail about it too. Um, when I work on products, guys, they're broken which means they're broken beyond repair, which means if they're broken beyond repair, I'm going to reutilize the parts. Don't kill me. It happens. Today, in this episode of our of the Gamer's Vault, I'm going to go back to my Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to put it in the NES case, and you're probably thinking right about now, who cares, right? A lot of people have done it already, right? But in mine, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to pop, pop a video of the motherboard of the original NES you probably see it around here, around my face or whatever. With that picture, on the right corner of that picture, you're going to see a, a metal container. And in that metal container is the power source for the Nintendo. The motherboard I had here was warped, but the power source was still good. So what I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to take that power source. I'm going to use it with a Raspberry Pi. I'm also going to keep the composite. So I have a Nintendo that works. This is not the one that I'm using. So I'm going to keep this active and use the power port from this to actually power my Pi. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it. It's going to be pretty easy. If you follow it little by little, if you have any questions or concerns, you can go ahead and, and put them down below. But I'm going to show you exactly what I did. So that way it'll help you guys out if you want to go ahead and make this make this change. But please, I'm a purist at heart. Do this only if your Nintendo is beyond repair. And you don't want to get rid of the beautiful case that it came in. I mean, come on, guys. We all eat the memo berries. All right? Either way, let's get started. Alright guys, we're going to be working on the power for the NES motherboard. That's what we're working on right now in this video. And we're going to take these by segments little by little because I don't want to rush everybody through it. Now, if you're a younger viewer, two things. One, get your parents permission before doing this. This will shock you. It won't kill you. But let me tell you, you will feel it. It will hurt. Next thing we're going to do is I'll get my multimeter. I set it to 20 here. It has a little black light, but it goes out after a while. That's what I don't like about this multimeter. But anyway, let's find, we got five pins from that motherboard that we had to desolder. Let's find out where the power is. The first one, there's nothing. Second one, nothing. Third one, nothing. The fourth one has .45. Not enough power that I need. What about the last one? Whoa, the last one's about 9.11. That's beautiful. That's what, 9.11? No, okay. That's beautiful. All right. So there's two things I, I got from my test so far. One, we found out where the power is. Two, these three at the beginning could be the RCA or the component. We're going to find out, I mean composite. We're going to find out exactly which one it is. That's another thing. But the main goal of this, I wanted to show you guys just a crude thing that I put together, is my USB. I took apart um, my USB for the car. And I need it for the hard drive and the Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to tell you about that in a minute, but let's test it to see if it works, right? Why not? Got to test to see if it works. We're going to ground one end there and the other end. We're going to ground, we already have it here. Let's go to the power. So There we go. We have power. Why is this important? There's two reasons why doing this is important. One, I want to keep it um, aesthetically pleasing. I want it to look exactly like an original. So I don't want to take anything out of it. Two, the hard drive needs power. Why do you ask that? The Raspberry Pi can do about 2.5 amps, you know, I believe, 2.5 amps, which is enough to run itself. But for an external hard drive, it's not enough. 
So we had to use this to get us enough power to run the hard drive and the Pi at the same time without any having any problem issues. So 9, about 9 volt, 9 11, 9 10, that's perfect for what we want. So I'm going to put this together, I'm going to solder this on, I'm going to show you how it's soldered, and uh, yeah, let's get this power started. Hey guys, I'm back. So I'm going to show you a couple things I've done. It's going to be a little difficult, so I, please forgive me, okay? So the first thing we're going to talk about is the back here. Ooh, let me get that out of focus, back into focus a little. Okay, so the blue wires here, oh wow, sorry about that, the camera likes to go out of focus. The blue wires here are the power, positive and negative, for our USB, the USB device that we use. I soldered it on to the bottom there, you see? And on the side. I, I decided to keep the blue, the little flaps. Who cares? I mean, it's going to be glued to the case. The next thing I did was really something you didn't need to do for a Raspberry Pi. But since it's on the Nintendo, I'm going to be immersive as I can get. Okay? We all know what these look like. As the camera tries to autofocus, I apologize. There we go. The red and yellow on the side of the Nintendo. I'm going to utilize them. I probably would never, in your lifetime and mine, never use these. But you know what? It's there. I'm going to use it. So what you're going to do is, in order to use it, you're going to get red, white, and yellow connections, which is called composite. Excuse me. And you're, it's going to come in a pack that has the red, white, and yellow connection, and then gonna, at the end of it has this headphone jack connection. And you're probably saying to yourself, if you're a newbie at Retro, uh, Retro Pi or Raspberry Pi, excuse me, what the hell are you showing me? I'm going to help you. This is my Pi. And on the side of the Pi has a, has a headphone jack, as you can see. It's right here. You can plug it in here, and this will provide both audio and video. So, you're going to get a composite to headphone jack, and you're going to cut the tips off. See? This is a yellow one. And this is the red one. Now, this is going to be completely easy. At the very top, at the very tip, I'm going to show you real quick with my finger. If you notice, there's like a glob here of solder. That is not me adding solder. I actually used the solder that came with the Nintendo. And what you're going to do is, when you strip the wires and cut these, after you cut these heads off, and you strip down the wires, one side of it is red, the other one is black. So it's kind of like positive, negative. It doesn't matter what side that you cut off, or, oh my god, I, I forgot the yellow side, which one's the red side, it doesn't matter. That does not matter. Once you cut them off, you solder it to the board, like I did here, and the black wires you still need, they're ground. Um, I'm probably going to ground it to the, uh, the, the screw hole here, because it's not really, I mean, I could probably find some better ground for it, and I probably should later on, but as this prog uh, project progresses, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, before I continue on, I should have told you guys earlier, at the bottom and top of the power, uh, uh, the power uh, system for the NES, it's going to have these metal um, plates. You're not going to need them anymore. This and the one on top of this is garbage. You don't need them. All you need is the power to be exposed because uh, underneath it it's plastic so if you can expose this one on the bottom it don't matter it's gonna be plastic so let's put this together and start working on the next segment so I'll see you guys there oh, welcome back guys alright so once we got everything screwed into the case with the power and wire management is always key in ca small cases like this so always want to do wire management um, the next segment is the HDMI. So I already dremeled it out, but I'm going to show you guys what I mean. You got to get yourself some one of the, something like this. I'm going to put it in the description below, uh, all the materials. But you need something like this: HDMI out to connect to your Raspberry Pi. That's what I'm going to connect is the HDMI. Now, I'm not going to put a wired connection in this. And the, probably the first thing I'm going to say is, "But James, why? You can have, you can definitely make the room." Yeah, I could, but it's not immersive. And the Raspberry Pi has a built-in Wi-Fi, 100%. That's the reason why I wouldn't let the Raspberry Pi power the external hard drive. It doesn't have enough power to do that. If I give it enough power 
to just buy B by itself, it's perfect. Most of the USBs I am going to be using. But anyway, let's get back. I digress. So I dremeled it out. I measured out my 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 edge here, right? And I went ahead and I dremeled it into the case. See? I dremeled it from the inside because I don't care if this all get looks like crappy crap because I don't don't care at all. This look, should look nice, and it does. Has enough of my screws. It even has look. See guys? It even has the. I mean, this will never work, the 2-3, so I don't care about that. Nor is the RF switch, but the power adapter will work. And, of course, my red and yellow video cable. Anyway, we're going to put the HDMI in, and then we're going to be working on the next segment. We're going to be working on this, which is the power button, reset button. So we're going to get that to work by cutting this wire here and using the same power reset, because we need those. What's the use of not having a Nintendo when it can't light up red, right? All right, guys. See you in a minute. Well, well, well. <clears throat> we are at the halfway point to our build. So let's go, let me explain a couple of things first because a lot of things changed throughout this video that I didn't rec make uh, a amends to it. Two things. One, the cigarette lighter that I was using for the alternate power, the one I originally used, died. It completely died. I used a busted um, USB uh, splitter. Uh, powered uh, splitter and it died so I had to replace it I went to a micro center which is not too far and I got this one and it's all velcroed in and I'll tell you about why I did that in a minute uh, this one was about five dollars it's a 3.4 amp uh, power that so it takes 10 amps from our power here that the Nintendo uses and converts it into the this one right here, which usually could support 12 volt DC. Um, from there, it converts that power to the 3.4, which gives power to the Raspberry Pi, which will be sitting in this section here. And then it goes, uh, it'll supply power to the external hard drive that I'm going to be putting in this section. The reason why I'm not putting it together yet, I want you guys to see the progressive progression that I have going on. So, I'm going to introduce you a couple of other things as well. Now, these are not glued in. The USB hub and the cigarette lighter that I converted over are not glued in. Now, they're Velcroed in. Why are they Velcroed in? Why is that ghetto? Um, the reason why they're Velcroed in is if, if, they, if these par parts were to die, it's easy for them to pull it off, take out the Velcro, replace the part, put it back in. The, I mean, if you glue this in here, it's not gonna be hard, it's not gonna be easy, and I'm not gonna screw it in because this case is not is thin, so it's kind of thin. So I'm not gonna just screw it in there and then it messes up what I gotta do. So I'm not doing that. Velcro works pretty much, and I got a good strong Velcro from you can get them from Home Depot, but I got mine from Michaels, uh, and they got for like uh, about ten bucks, so it's not so bad. The next part, I did not get rid of my power switch and the reset switch. Why is that? I got a mouseberry circuit, so I got a mouseberry circuit. I converted uh, the re re reset switch and the power switch to work on the circuit. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I got to program it into our Pi. This is what these two wires here, the blue and white, they go on GPIO 24 and 25 on the Pi, and it allows us to control the on and off function, which I'll program for the Pi later on. The red light that's in front of your uh, NES is also attached to the Masbury circuit. So when I turn on the Pi, the red light comes on. And when I turn it off, it goes out like a normal NES. So our, our merge is going really well. Now, the like I said to you guys earlier in the, other, in the other videos here, the red and yellow connections that's on here is already hooked up to this. So when I connect this into the Pi, guess what? I will also have red and yellow. Will I ever use it? Not on your life. I'm gonna, as you can see, I already cut the holes out for the HDMI, and um, see, it looks really nice. Well, at least, at least as much as I can get it to be nice. And I cut that holes out so I can use HDMI. I, I wanted to be immersive as much as I can for the original NES, and I think that's the reason why I was go. That's the main thing uh, was I was going for. It is kind of heavy. But then again, if you think about it, the original NES was a little bit heavy on there. So, the only thing I did not change yet, because I haven't decided what I'm going to do, 
is my front. The one player one player two. I know there's some USB hubs. I may change it or I may keep the original uh, Nintendo. But by the way, uh, for this to play this, I'm going to be using, like I said earlier, in the other video, uh, earlier this video, I'm going to be using this. The uh, Nest 30 Pro Game Controller. It uh, It's Bluetooth, so it works with the Raspberry Pi 3. And um, I got wireless, so I don't need to hook up the actual wired connection. So I'm going to put this all together. I'm going to show you what it looks like at the end of our video here. I'm not going to show you booting up. It does boot up. It powers up. I did try it out. But you guys seen all the Raspberry Pi videos. It makes no sense for me to just show you that. But I will show you the connections on how this will work out. So give me a minute. All right, everyone. So we're back. Um, I put everything together. It kind of now looks like a mini computer stuffed inside a Raspberry Pi at this point. The wires do stick up because of the um, USB powered hub. That's all it does is giving it power to devices that need power. Um, it came right. It, overall, it was fine. The HDMI works perfectly. The power goes into it perfectly. And the video comes right up. Um, I haven't tried the external hard drive yet. I probably will do that another time. I'll probably still bring up the video. Uh, the next part of the video or the next two videos after this one I will uh, install um, games. But in the hard drive that I put in here is 750 gigs of space. So that's what this one has on top of the 128 that's already in the micro SD card. Even though this sticks up it's not a problem because the, when the shell goes on top of this it has plenty of room because it's going to be empty on top so that it works out really well. That's pretty much it. This probably is finished, at least for now. Uh, inside the side, what I'm going to do with the front USBs here. Either way, guys, if you do like the video, thumbs up. Subscribe. Leave me some comments. Tell me what you think, what you like, what you didn't like. I know there's a lot of wire maintenance. I try the best I can, but with the wiring here, you can only go so far. Either way, thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you guys next time on The Vault.